Being surrounded by constant negativity means that Americans feel like it's constantly the end of the world. But it might be worth taking things into perspective. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Okay, I gotta talk about something. There's been a lot of negativity going around. Polls indicate that Americans see the U.S. as being in decline. They aren't confident that life for our children's generation will be better than it has been for us. And more Americans now say life for people like them is worse today than it was 50 years ago. You know things are rough when people think back to the good old days of the Vietnam War. Apparently the D in PTSD stands for delightful. It certainly doesn't help that news coverage is overwhelmingly negative. And it may kill your children. Find out more tonight at 8 p.m. According to one New Zealand study, headlines full of anger, disgust, fear, and sadness have grown exponentially since 2000. Headlines with joy and neutrality, meanwhile, have been on the decline. Journalists have become less neutral? That's infuriating, revolting, terrifying, and disgusting. Whatever will get your attention so we can hook you in and trap you with all those ads. Now, there's also confirmation bias. People tend to find or agree with information that confirms what they already believe. So their pessimistic views of reality will be confirmed by whatever data they can find that prove it. Of course, there are legitimate things to be concerned about. Lots of things have become more expensive, especially housing, medical expenses, higher education, and jet fuel, if it gets any worse, Taylor Swift might have to stop flying and start driving places that are 30 miles away, like plebs. And there are the conflicts that we hear about happening all over the world, including within the US, with round two of a rematch nobody wanted. But are things really as bad as they seem? I'll tell you more, and why your children's lives may be in danger after the break. Welcome back. So, wages are down, prices are up, and everything sucks. Or does it? Let's take a look at cars. People complain about how buying a car is now more expensive than ever. The problem is people compare that to cars from the 1970s. Have you seen a car from the 1970s? Sure, cars may have been cheaper back then, but they don't begin to compare to today's standards. I mean, you can make your Tesla fart on command. We're truly living in a golden age. But seriously, vehicles back then were pollution monsters. They had lead emissions. That has drastically changed over time and has correlated with less lead in our blood. And that's a good thing. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, compared to 1970 vehicle models, new cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks are roughly 99% cleaner for common pollutants. New heavy-duty trucks and buses are roughly 99% cleaner than 1970 models. So yeah, while cars were cheaper back then, they were also dirtier than a Cat Williams stand-up performance at a landfill on Ash Wednesday. On top of being cleaner, cars today are also a lot safer with the rate of motor-related fatalities continuously declining. 50 years ago, driving was somehow less safe than a level in twisted metal. Technology has also made cars capable of doing things 1970s cars couldn't imagine, like being able to fart. So while it's true that cars are more expensive, it's also true that cars are much higher quality. That goes for a lot of things. But if wages don't keep up, what does it matter? Well. More on that one after the break. Welcome back. So you've probably heard about how wages haven't kept up with inflation since the 1970s and how purchasing power has barely budged in decades. I wouldn't be surprised if this idea has been ingrained in your mind. So you might instantly reject what I'm about to say, but try to hold off on your visceral reaction and just hear me out. Wages and inflation are in a never ending race. But the idea of wage stagnation was actually debunked years ago. People who complain about wage stagnation look only at wages provided and don't see the other factors mixed in. Over the last few decades, employees have been receiving an increasingly large portion of their overall compensation in the form of benefits such as health care, paid vacation time, hour flexibility, improved work environments, and even daycare. Not to mention office pizza parties. Who needs a raise when you got pepperoni? 
Joking aside, taking personal consumption expenditure into account, it seems that things are working out for workers better than people would have you believe. It might not feel that way, but one useful way to look at wages is to think about how much time it takes to get certain things based on the amount of money you're earning. And I don't just mean three-in-one shampoo, soap, and conditioner. They made four-in-one with toothpaste? I could wash everything from one bottle. That would truly be a golden age. According to an economist at the American Enterprise Institute, a little over 100 hours of work was required to purchase a washing machine, and 127 hours for a TV in 1959. That changed to 23 and 20 hours, respectively, in 2013. He also points out that a TV from 1964 listed for $750 back then would cost as high as $6,200 in 2016. What would a $6,200 TV look like today? I don't think this is gonna fit in my kitchen. And like with cars, technology is so much better now. So quality of life is still improving. Even for the American poor, it may be hard to believe. But according to research from the University of Notre Dame, the University of Chicago, and Baylor University, U.S. poverty continued declining despite the pandemic. It's nice to hear it wasn't just the rich that got richer during the pandemic. The universities report a decline in poverty much greater than official data might suggest. That's because official data on poverty focuses on things like cash income only without taking into consideration things like tax credits, in-kind transfers, and underreporting of certain kinds of income. The gig economy. Me personally, I earn a little extra income with cockfighting. No one can beat my champ, Cocky Balboa. That's a joke, I don't support cockfighting. According to the researchers, consumption, which measures what families are able to purchase in terms of food, housing, transportation, and other goods and services, offers a better indicator of economic well-being than income, which can fluctuate for reasons unrelated to well-being. Between 1980 and 2022, consumption poverty fell by more than 27 percentage points, from 33.8% to 6%, while the official poverty rate fell by only 1.5 percentage points over that period. Now, part of that could be people are just buying more on credit and really can't afford what they're buying. And I can imagine that a lot of you are probably typing in the comments section right now saying something like how people are hurt by inflation, that people have to work multiple jobs to make ends meet, that families need more than one income earner now, etc. I'm not saying those things aren't true. In fact, I've brought them up multiple times in previous episodes. The U.S. government especially has done a sloppy job that ended up screwing us over in a lot of ways. Well, most of us. The point of this episode is not to downplay the negatives or gaslight you into thinking everything's hunky-dory. It's not. I know. But every once in a while, for the sake of our mental health, it's important to put some things into perspective and look at the nuance. Because if you let negativity bias blackpill you, you can't improve. I was really negative about my financial situation until I actually made a budget, tightened my belt, and started paying off debt. I really recommend this book, Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. Not affiliated or sponsored by him in any way, it's just a strategy that really helped me. And speaking of strategy, my current strategy to get around YouTube censorship is by hiding controversial or interesting conversations in gaming content. Check out the latest about how to beat your inner demons hidden in a game of Monster Hunter. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.